Wait, 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 wait. Are you telling me that there's five new symptoms of borderline personality disorder? What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And welcome back to another beautiful day during Mental Health Awareness Month. And today we're gonna to be talking about borderline personality disorder. So we're gonna be talking about five dysregulation symptoms of BPD. This is something that Marsha Linehan talks about. Um, she's one of the founders of Dialectical Behavioral Therapy. So do me a favor and please share this video. If you're somebody who struggles with BPD, sharing this video might help other people understand what you're going through, but it will also help other people who might be struggling with BPD kind of understand what's going on and they might be able to find the help that they need, all right? So <clears throat> what is dysregulation, okay? Dysregulation, simply put, is the inability to manage something, all right? It's unmanageable, okay? So if you know somebody who struggles with BPD or you are somebody who struggles with BPD, you know that things can become a little unmanageable. So let's get started and talk about the five symptoms of BPD when it comes to dysregulation. Symptom number one, emotional dysregulation. And this is pretty self-explanatory. Emotions are just all over the place. They are bouncing around like crazy. So in an average person, Emotions come back to center pretty easily, okay? Depending on what the situation is. Like you might get really mad, you might get really upset, but then you're like, oh, okay. You have the ability to regulate your emotions and calm down, okay? But with somebody with BPD, their emotions are bouncing all over the place, all right? So some studies show that BPD has an effect on the prefrontal cortex. One of the responsibilities of the prefrontal cortex is emotional regulation. So people with borderline typically bounce all over the place when it comes to their emotions. That's why sometimes BPD is misdiagnosed as bipolar disorder. Symptom number two, interpersonal dysregulation. So typically the relationships that people with BPD have, they're often chaotic, okay? Whether that is a husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, mom, dad, coworkers, anybody, friends, it could be anybody. It's very hard to maintain these relationships. That's why the book that I uh, reviewed on my channel not too long ago, I Hate You Don't Leave Me, is a perfect title because People with BPD, they'll love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, and then they're like, get the heck away from me, you know? But a lot of this also comes from their fears of abandonment. And a lot of these fears are often imagined fears of abandonment. Symptom number three, self-dysregulation. People with BPD often do not have a stable sense of self. A lot of times they seem to lack their own identity. That's why a lot of actors and actresses have BPD. Not all of them, but there are a lot who do because getting into a role helps give them an identity. People with BPD often uh, become one of those chameleons and they'll try to blend in with different crowds. They're always searching for the next hobby or next thing to try to get some kind of identification so they know who they are. Symptom number four, behavioral dysregulation. People with BPD are extremely impulsive and they often lack the ability to take a pause and properly assess what their behaviors will do, what the outcome will be, what the consequences will be. This is why a lot of people with BPD get into substance abuse. That's why people with BPD, there's an issue with promiscuity, okay? They're looking for these instant gratifications, not really seeing the overall picture about how this immediate reaction can actually cause them a lot of harm. And symptom number five, cognitive dysregulation. A lot of people with BPD, one of the symptoms is being disassociated, disconnected from reality. This can create a sense of paranoia. So when you combine a sense of paranoia with a fear of abandonment, that's often why if you're dating somebody with BPD, they can lash out and then you combine emotional dysregulation as well. It becomes this whole whirlwind of a mess. But a lot of uh, people with BPD also disconnect from reality and sometimes it feels like they're not even in a real place, you know, because they're kind of having this like, out of touch experience. Now, the good news is, the good news is, is that dialectical behavioral therapy helps a lot with this, you know? A lot of DBT um, is about regulating 
different parts of BPD symptoms. This is one reason why they use mindfulness. I did another video, and all of these will be linked up in the info card, about mindfulness for borderline personality disorder. Science has proven that mindfulness, a regular practice of mindfulness, whether it's formal meditation or being mindful and writing things down, it can help restructure the brain to help you get more control and regulate these different aspects of your life. So I will provide a bunch of resources down below from books, websites, and stuff like that. So make sure you check that description below, all right? But again, again, please, please, please share this video. So on one hand, we can help create some more awareness, get some more empathy, help people understand what's going on with people who have borderline personality disorder, but also so other people with BPD might have a better idea about what's actually going on. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here, I don't know what you're waiting for, click that little round subscribe button. I'm always making videos about mental health. If you wanna check out some other videos on this channel, you can click or tap on one of those thumbnails right there, okay? So thanks again so much for watching. Stay regulated today, and I'll see you next time.